What's up, guys? It's good to see you. Welcome back to Junior Church with Pastor Nick and Miss Noadis. I'm glad you're here with us. All right, it's a brand new month, which means we're introducing a brand new element. Are you ready? I know you are. Well, here we go. We're going to count down from three, and then we're going to put the new element on the screen. Are you ready? Here we go. Count down with me. Three, two, one, and the new element is justice. Justice. My, what a cool word, huh? Well, look, here's how we're going to define that word justice this month. Here it is. Treating every person equally as an image bearer of God. Treating every person equally as an image bearer of God. Now, some of you, maybe you've taken a field trip to a courtroom, or maybe you've seen a courtroom like in a TV show or program or something like that. Well, a courtroom is located in a courthouse where um, legal things take place. Um, anytime you go to a courtroom, it's usually to resolve some kind of legal matter, right? Well, there's important people in that courtroom, but none more important than the judge. The judge is in charge of that courtroom, and he's also in charge of making some pretty important decisions. The judge, you seem to know what he looks like. It's a man or a woman who's dressed up in a, in a black robe. They've got this gavel in their hand that they smack the table with. And the judge just kind of listens to all the information coming from both sides, and he tries to make a fair and just decision. Now, the judge is trained and is supposed to treat every person equally. That judge, he or she, has, has taken an oath. They've made a promise to uphold justice. So our definition for justice is teaching us to be like a judge. Because every person we meet is made in the image of God. Every single person deserves to be treated equally. Now this month, we're going to focus on lessons about why this is the right way to live. It's going to be great, but it's also going to be challenging for some of you who maybe treat someone or look at someone differently because of how they look, talk, or act. You know, somebody might be different than you, but if we're going to be just like God is just, we have to treat everyone the same way, with respect and dignity, because we're all made in the image of God. All right, Miss Nawadis is going to come now and show us our memory verse for the month. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello, boys and girls. Let's get ready to sing together. Because our new element of the month is justice, treating every person equally as an image bearer of God, then we will sing about a song straight from Ephesians 4.32 that says, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Do, 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 bop. Let's do it one more time. Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Do, 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 bop. Do, 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 bop. Good job singing today. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, we're going to jump now into our big idea of the week. Are you ready? I am too. Let's read it together. Justice is part of God's character. Say it again with me. Justice is part of God's character. All right, can you think of a favorite um, character from your, um, maybe a favorite movie or TV show you really like? Favorite character. Okay, 
Mm, that's a good one. Interesting, interesting. Well, one of my favorite characters is Batman, right? Who likes Batman? Of course you do. He's the best superhero, right? Now look, the person who plays Batman isn't really Batman. He's just playing a character on screen. When he takes off his costume, he's just a regular person, the person God made him to be. But you know what? That kind of character and the character we're talking about of God is not the same thing. It's different when you're talking about somebody who's pretending to be a character and you're talking about someone's character. See, when you're talking about someone's character, you're talking about a part of who they really are. It's their nature. And so when we talk about justice being part of God's character, we're not talking about God putting on this costume, that pretending to be just. No, just justice is actually a part of who he is. And because God is just, he's able to treat everyone with justice. We're going to continue to kind of flesh out that idea in our lesson today. But right now, Miss Nawadis is going to come sing a song with us, and then we're going to watch our big idea video for the week. Hello, boys and girls. It's so good to see you again on this Sunday morning. And now it's time to, for us to practice our memory verse of the month. Today starts a new month, so we have a new verse for this month, and I want us to get started. We'll read it twice together. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Psalm 82, 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Psalm 82, 3. Boys and girls, this verse makes it clear that there is something that God is consistent in communicating throughout the whole Bible. And that is that many people living in this world are weak. Maybe you have seen some of them. They are weak. They are thirsty. They are hungry. Some of them are even hurting and in need of stronger people to stand up and help them. God stands up for them and he leads and directs other people to stand up for them too. Throughout this week, I want you to think about that. And maybe when you're out and about, maybe in a store, maybe in a parking lot with your mom and dad, maybe you'll pay more attention to someone who may be in need. And maybe the Lord, if you're a Christian, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about a way that you can help that person with your mom and dad's permission, of course. But I want you to ask the Lord this week, if you were a Christian, Lord, lead me, direct me to maybe find someone else to help and show me how I can help that person. I want you to think about this verse and think about how you can apply it this week. Hey boys and girls, how's it going? I'm your good friend, Pastor Steve, and I wanna welcome you to today's Big idea video, 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 video. Did you hear that echo? I love echoes. Echo, 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 echo. Oh, I'm just kidding. I was doing that with my voice. But have you ever enjoyed an echo? That's so fun. Well, I'm so glad you're here with us today to begin learning about the element of justice. Yes, justice. You have to say it kind of low like that with the arm. Justice. Well, justice is defined as treating everyone equally as an image bearer of God. And this is going to be a really, really important, important month for us to learn about this amazing element. Well, as we get started today, I have a special treat for you. I didn't quite know what to expect from this, but we are going to have a special guest that you know and that you love. His name is Mr. Giraffe. If you know Mr. Giraffe, let me see your hands. Oh yeah, that's right. He's our good buddy. He's hilarious. He's a great giraffe. Well, today, kids, 
he wants some feedback from you, okay? He's been taking acting classes because he wants to develop the ability to play certain characters. So in just a moment, Mr. Giraffe is going to come onto the stage and you're going to watch him perform, okay? All right. Are you ready, Mr. Giraffe? Yeah, Mr. Steve. I'm ready. Okay, he's ready. Here we go. Well, howdy there, partners. I'm your good friend, Mr. Giraffe, but I'm playing a very, very familiar character right now. Do you know who I am? Let me say a few of my lines and see if you can pick it up. You're my favorite deputy. Huh? Huh? There's a snake in my boots. You got it? What do you think? I was being Woody from Toy Story. Huh? Not so good? <sighs> okay, well, I got some more characters, so hang on. Do, 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 do. Oh, hey! Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! How are you doing, kids? <laughs> Can you guess who I'm supposed to be? Hmm? You might see me at your local mall around Christmas time. You can come have your picture made with me. I live in a very cold place where I make lots and lots of toys for the boys and girls. I have many friends who help me accomplish this task. Do you know who I am? Ho, 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 ho. Well, kids, what'd you think of that one? Did I do a good job portraying that character? What about that cowboy character, huh? Well, I'm gonna keep on trying. These acting classes sure are hard, but I want to be able to be the characters that I've seen in movies and be able to act like them. Hold on, I got one more good one. Search your heart. You know it to be true. I am your father. Well, kids, do you know who I'm trying to be now? Do you recognize this character? He's famous. He's a villain. Do you got it? Let me try again. Well, what do you think, kids? That was another character I was playing. Did you like that one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you think I could do it a little bit better? Whew. Well, I'm just going to have to go on back to the drawing board and keep on practicing, I guess. Well, Mr. Giraffe, you were looking for some feedback, and I hope you appreciated that. I think the kids are really want to be encouraging to you, but, you know, I think you need to keep working on those characters to be a little bit better. Well, kids, were you able to tell what three characters Mr. Giraffe was playing? Right? Woody from Toy Story. Yes, of course, Santa Claus. And then, ooh, you got it, Darth Vader from the Star Wars movies. Now, we were able to tell that Mr. Giraffe was playing those parts, but Mr. Giraffe, that's not who he is. Who he is is a really great giraffe. Who else can reach up to the top of trees to get the choicest leaves for his lunch? Only a giraffe can do that. So kids, what we want you to understand today is that you can play a character, but character is really a part of who you are. It makes you, you. So Mr. Giraffe, he can pretend to play the character of Darth Vader, say, but he is a giraffe. He doesn't have to pretend to do that. Well, our big idea for today says justice is part of God's character. God does not put on justice like he's pretending to be a certain character. Justice is who God is. That is part of what makes him God. There are a lot of grown-ups that don't understand what God's justice is all about. And you are going to learn that today. So, you know what time it is. Mr. Draft's going to go get his Bible. I want you to get your Bible. And let's learn about this big idea together, okay? Well, again, our element this month is justice. And we define that term this way this month. Justice is treating everyone equally as an image bearer of God. Now, we're all made in God's image. Genesis chapter 1 teaches us that, that God created man in his image. Now, that doesn't mean that we look like God physically. What it means is that we're created with minds capable of thinking like God does and with emotions capable of feeling like God does. And those are just a couple of the ways among some others. But what I'm trying to tell you is that treating people equally is something we should do because we're all worth the same to God. We're all made in his image. Now that can be a positive truth for those who love God, 
but it can be a negative truth for the ones who are selfish and choose to live their own way. Justice can be a positive or negative thing depending on how you're living. Now, we often talk about God's love and forgiveness and how they're available for every person, and that's true. Those are very wonderful and important truths we're going to circle back around to and talk about. But to have the best understanding of God's love and forgiveness, we also need to understand his justice. Our Lord is always ready to show love and forgiveness. But any person who rejects him also stands in danger of being administered justice, punishment. And both of those things are a part of understanding God's justice. All right, so let's look at this a little closer now. So our big idea today says justice is part of God's character. Remember I told you earlier, we talked about the idea of a judge, right? Well, human judges sometimes make errors. Sometimes they don't see things the way they should. And sometimes they just make improper calls. That's because either they think that they treat people unfairly sometimes or because they just don't have all the knowledge that they need to make the right decision. But guess what? God is the perfect judge. God knows each and every one of us perfectly, which means he's able to judge us perfectly. And because God is perfectly knowledgeable and perfectly just and perfectly righteous, he's going to treat each and every person with a consistent standard of justice. God is the ultimate judge, and it is he that ultimately decides what is right and wrong. He's perfect. He's right. And justice, it does not just describe what he does. Justice is a part of his character. It describes who he is. Let's start now by reading Psalm chapter 89. Look at verses 11 through 13 with me. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, Thou hast founded them. The north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Now look, these are beautiful verses. They are words of praise to Almighty God. They speak to His strength and His power. I'm going to read the next verse to you. It comes from uh, the same chapter, but it's verse 14. Listen as I read it. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Can you picture that scene with me for a second? Can you imagine standing before the throne of God? How would that feel? Scary? Intimidating? Glorious? Majestic? Probably all of those things wrapped into one, right? But I can bet we would also probably feel a little bit humbled by God's power. And that He would even let us stand before Him. But the truth of the matter is, as Christians, He invites us to come to His throne when we pray. We come to the throne of God with our request. And he's just as real to us then as your best friend is. He's a real person. And our big idea teaches justice is part of God's character. And this verse talks about that. Let's read it again. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth are shall go before thy face. This verse teaches us that justice and righteousness make up the foundation of God's throne. You know what a foundation is? Well, a foundation is something that is the base for a particular thing. Something that is built upon that foundation. Now, we don't, do, we don't build anything valuable on a foundation that's not sure. 
We want a rock-solid foundation to build something on. Can you imagine that if your house was built on the foundation of water? <laughs> Can you imagine coming home from school and your house is just kind of floating away? That wouldn't be a solid, firm foundation, right? Well, this verse teaches that the foundation of God's character includes justice. And the amazing thing about God's justice is that it never changes. Almost everything changes in our world, right? Things change. People change their minds. The world is shifting day by day. But God is consistent. He's the same today as he was a thousand years ago. He's the same today as he'll be a million years into the future. But that also means that what he says is right and wrong never changes. And the Bible teaches us that his love and his faithfulness come from the fact that he's a God of justice. Listen to this verse from 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you see that? The basis for God's forgiveness can be linked in this verse to his justice, his faithfulness. You know, if we continue to look at that example of a house, if you can imagine God's love and faithfulness being like the walls and the roof of a house, and his justice would be like the foundation that that house is built upon. If justice was not part of God's character, the walls and the roof, they would collapse. They wouldn't be effective. They wouldn't be able to hold up. But it's the consistency of God's justice that ensures every single person on this earth has equal access to God's forgiveness and God's love. God's justice is the same for every person, and it doesn't change. Now, that's a positive thing for us, right? Faithfulness. His faithfulness and justice means that he will forgive and he'll be loving. Those are positive things, but there is a negative aspect to God's justice as well. His justice also requires that he keep his promise to punish sin. Listen to this verse in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth. This verse illustrates to us that the Lord loves justice, and he hates wickedness. He hates robbery and wrongdoing. Remember, justice is treating everyone equally based on the same exact standard that God has set in place. God is a God of justice. And that means that he's going to set things right in ways that are both positive and negative. All right, so let's talk about this now. Let's just kind of wrap it all together. We have to see, young people, the full picture of what his justice means if we're going to fully understand this element for the month. You know, there's a lot of people who like to pick and choose which parts of God's justice they want to be okay with. You know, everyone likes to receive God's forgiveness and God's love, but some people don't want to accept the fact that God has to punish sin. You know, heaven and hell beautifully illustrate to us the, the fullness of God's justice. Heaven is available to everyone, anyone, who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save them. God makes his forgiveness available to all, equally. That's just. But see, God has the same standard for punishment for anyone who rejects his son, who rejects the gospel, who rejects him. And that punishment is hell. Now, we are all guilty of sin, and we're all deserving of that same punishment. It's just. It's the same standard for everyone. And the full picture of justice means having both the wonderful and the painful parts of God's justice in our minds. We have to allow God 
to teach us the hard parts as well as the good parts. The world is full of people who only want to focus on God's love, on God's kindness, but that's just not how it works, kids. That's not reality. And that understanding, understanding of God is not grounded in truth. It's not built upon the foundation of his justice. So as our big idea says today, justice is part of God's character. Now, that's great news for Christians, but it's really bad news for those who aren't part of God's family yet. But here's the good news for you, young person. Your eternal destiny can be changed in one choice. And if you're not part of God's family yet, I encourage you to talk to your parent or a godly person you respect about how you can be part of God's family about how you can put your faith and trust in Jesus alone to save you and change your destiny from hell to heaven. You can receive the good part of God's justice, that love and that forgiveness, and not the bad part. Look, God wants us all to accept that free gift of salvation, but it's a choice he's not going to force you to make. You have to make it. Well, stick around with me this month as we continue to learn about justice. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you next week.